take a look at a photo series celebrating the life of Nokutela Mdima Dube, whose work was first published in the U.S. when she was just 10 years old. Mdima Dube was a qualified teacher who founded Ohlangia High School in Inanda. She was an established individual before marrying the ANC's founding president, Reverend John Langa Libalele Dube, in, 19, in 1894, that is. Her story is currently being highlighted and brought to life in a Legacy Creates project titled Amagama Kanokutela. Well, we'll be speaking to some of those involved in the project shortly. Before we do that, however, let's take a look at what you can expect from this project. Well, joining us is executive producer Asanda Sizani, writer and performer Sipokazi Jonas, and musician Spam Tlalosi. Good evening to all of you, and thank you so much for your time. The story of Nogutela Mdimadube uh, is one of those that really signifies the extent to which women have been written out of the history books, and this was really a woman that was incredibly ahead of her time. Asanda, let me perhaps begin with you as the executive producer. Why did you take an interest in her story? I was interested in Nogutela Mdima Dube a few years ago already as a woman that has worked in magazine publishing. Um, I was just very upset and, and disappointed actually that I had never discovered her in the magazine or print publishing industry that I'd worked for. Um, she was never part of the curriculum when I was a student and I was only discovering who she was through the efforts um, of Professor Sharif Keita who had created a documentary in 2016. So I took interest in her as a woman that's an important figure in publishing in media because she was the co-founder of a newspaper that exists mm -hmm. today. So she really was forgotten um, from, from that industry and it was important for us to, to refocus, um, to focus on her and, and bring light to her contributions in publishing first. And then also as a lover of music, as a lover of fashion and the arts, it was also important for, for me to just find out more about this woman. I was curious about her and all the contributions she's mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. Sipokazi, let's talk about the role then that somebody like you brings to work like this because again, uh, the point Asanda is making around just the lack of information around her. Professor Keita is really one of the few people who's been able to document her life and probably holds the greatest wealth of knowledge uh, around her. Oh, certainly. And, you know, as a writer, as a storyteller, there is an opportunity to be able to reimagine um, and to rewrite history, as, 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 as you've said a little earlier, that women have been written out of history. So there's a very intentional effort to rewrite them back into history. And as a theater maker, as a poet, I think there's also a, a creative imagination of how we view that contribution and how we see ourselves as recipients of the hard labor of women in history. So it's just an opportunity to pay tribute uh, as well as to celebrate what someone like Umam Noktelam Dimadube has done for this country. Mm. Spa, what does a story like this mean? Because again, we're talking about an incredibly powerful black woman, um, like I said earlier, who was ahead of her time and has not really been given the acknowledgement and today it is young black women like yourselves who are saying Nokutula's life mattered. Um, she was not insignificant. She, her story does deserve to be known and to be told. I think for me it's, it's an incredible honor to be part of a project like this. Uh, I think, you know, particularly because I'm from KZN. So, you know, for me it feels quite personal and I'm, and I'm uh, almost 
uh, just really excited about the fact that we get to, like Sakura is saying, reimagine and bring her life and bring her work into the fore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, to be part of something like this for me is also sort of strikes a chord with me personally, because I do feel like women have been intentionally written out of history. Um, and our achievements are not as celebrated as much as our male counterparts. So in a lot of ways, you know, this is a, uh, I don't know, a rebellious uh, sort of, you know, uh, a task for me um, to to say, you know, here's someone who has contributed so much and we dare to bring her, her music and her, her life and her achievements to life. What did the research process look like for you, Asanda? Um, and thank you for actually mentioning Professor Sharif Gaita also, because he's been very instrumental over the past few years in bringing Unokutela to the forefront. Um, also, he's the one that actually found Unokutela's Forgotten Grave. Um, in 2013, he's the one that found it, and it was unmarked, and he began the mission of actually finding finding her and, and making sure that um, her descendants, her living descendants, also get to understand who she was. So the research process for me had to include Professor Sharif Gaita as someone that already has, has, has done the groundwork. We've been having endless conversations with him and swapping notes, um, going through various databases, um, various archives, various um, libraries, um, locally, but mostly in, internationally. And it was very actually interesting for me to find how Nokutela is still very much not in South Africa. Mm-hmm. She's not found in South Africa, even just images of Nokutela, because we were looking for tangible material. We wanted the evidence of her in us tracing her life and her existence and her story. Um, so you go to the schools that she attended and worked in, you go to certain institutions, and it was very actually hard to find her there. Um, but it was really an incredible and very rewarding experience to actually find her. And I do believe that she was also guiding the process of us finding her because she's done so much work in actually making sure that she writes herself into the into the history books. Mm. Um, this this the, at, at this time, I think we're meant to find her. It's so important uh, what you're saying, and, and Sipokas, if I can just bring you in on this point. Again, she contributed so significantly, not just to the community, but also to um, the ANC itself as, as an organization. And uh, the lack of acknowledgement over that, uh, over that contribu- contribution, w- when you look into her life, why do you think that was? Uh, I think we're speaking to a systematic issue that runs not only in South Africa, across the world of undermining the contribution of women um, in history and not just not just history in terms of the, the some of the actions that we speak to, but certainly in politics. And we see in the very way in which the struggle movement itself has been framed and significant women um, and key, key, key figures within the struggle itself and how some of the, the, the challenges or some of the fights uh, whether it's uh, a feminist angle towards thinking about the fight against apartheid, um, whether it's queer rights, all of those seemingly uh, marginalized communities that aren't really given the space uh, to be able to, 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 to have their voices heard and to be part, who are actually part of the movement, who are there, and whether it's in the public sphere or in, in at home, you know, as they say, keeping the fire going because uh, people have been have been imprisoned and so there's 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 a very broad spectrum of how women contribute to our politics but i think the narrative is often reshaped in a way that's convenient mm. for how people want to view history and so we're here to be an inconvenience and i think using mm-hmm. art using fashion using music in a very specific way to say hey you know we we can't we can't necessarily trace all of those steps but we are going to reimagine through this particular lens that we think is important for how we're going to view history going forward uh, one thing i love about uh, you know part of what you're saying in terms of this project also being somewhat of a rebellion project is that through the life of Nokutula, we learn that women don't just have to be one thing. Uh, sometimes, mm. as society di- dictates, pa, so what are you hoping that people will be able to get out of this film? 
goodness, I, I want to talk about the, the what you've just mentioned about women having to be one thing. I think a lot of the time women have to be many things. <laughs> we have to do, be all things. Um, so if anything, I think that's one of the things that I, I'd like to take or people to take from this project, particularly women as well. Um, but I also really believe in the idea that your contributions will will be celebrated at some point. Mm. Um, she definitely never got her flowers at the time that she was alive. But I think, you know, through the work of Asanda, through the work of Spokaz, we are now sort of responsible for that. You know, so for me, um, I feel a great honor in being able to celebrate her in this lifetime. Uh, and so, you know, just just knowing that, you know, whatever you're putting into the world, it will it will it will be celebrated at some point. And so I, I think this is the way that I'm going forward with regards to what it is that I've contributed to this project. All right. Asanda, for those who are interested and keen to learn more, how will they be able to access the film? All right. We are actually, we are having a, a premiere of the short film, Amaka Amaka no Kutena, <laughs> on the 25th of January in Cape Town um, at the Zeitz Mocha the Museum of Contemporary Art Africa, which is just an incredible um, privilege for us to showcase this work there. Um, there will be a link that we share um, on our social media pages. Our handle is at legacy creates, at legacy underscore creates on Twitter. And please follow the hashtag Amaga, Amaga no Kutela. We're gonna post a link on Monday or Tuesday. There are very limited tickets, unfortunately. So for those that are in Cape Town, they'll, some of them will have an opportunity to watch it live. Um, otherwise, we, we are planning an online screening of the short film so that people can access it online um, and details will, will be posted. And we're also mm -hmm. open to having private screenings and we're inviting corporates, academic institutions, lovers of the arts and film and theatre um, and people that are interested in the story to please um, invite us for private screenings of this work. A part of what this does, especially again having a generation of, of young people that is so determined to capture this history is that we have the opportunity of doing things differently. So uh, Sipogazi, I hope that, you know, there won't be formidable women in our generation whose histories have been excluded uh, from mm. this time. Let's talk about what we can expect um, from you going forward. Well, I think the beautiful thing about this project in particular is that we consider ourselves to be part of a continuum of people who have interest in the story of Nocturne. So we, you know, we're, we're not the first to share her story. Mm -hmm. We're part of a number of pockets of people um, around the country and around the world who have this interest and who have been doing the work. And we just want to bring it to the fore. And we are, you know, individual flames just trying to get this bonfire started that we hope will will consume um, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this um, unfortunate situation. So really for us, it's our, our dream, especially with partnership, is to be able to create a long form project uh, a theater production, maybe even a film that will allow people, you know, to, to educate more about the story and to actually celebrate more women in history. And we hope that we'll just be passing that torch from one person to the next to ensure that within their community that they're celebrating the women who are doing the work um, and nationally and globally as well. As pa, it's impossible to do this work without having the kind of resources that one needs to be able to back these uh, projects up. I mean, what would you like to say to people who are in a position of, you know, uh, unlocking those resources to artists like yourself? Goodness, I mean, give us the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are interested, if you are intrigued, uh, if you are someone who is passionate about the archiving of, of women's stories, uh, please, please uh, reach out to us and go to the screening. Um, you know, there's just so much to this project and you know we only have a, a limited amount of time to tell you all about it but there's so much that both asanda and Spogazi and all you know all the other the flame the, the ones who are carrying the flame um have been doing behind the scenes both on social media so get onto social media and find out more about this project 
projects like this need the resources and the capital to be able to reach as many communities as possible. So we need we need as much assistance as possible. Well, congratulations to all of you for being able to make this project come alive and certainly something uh, that South Africans should uh, be, make the opportunity to see. And that was, of course, the uh, members of the Legacy Creates a project. Uh, that's executive producer Asanda Sizani. Pogazi, Jonas and Spa Mdalosi.